Okay, in today's video, we're going to be looking at our Navlink 2 wireless NMEA 2000 gateway and showing you how to set that up so that you can get the data from it on the Navionics app. So let's first of all just check that we're wirelessly connected to the Navlink 2. So we go to the settings and there we go, DY Wi-Fi um, and then the four digits at the end, which is unique to the, the unit. And don't worry, um, as long as you've got that little blue tick next to it, that means it's you're wirelessly connected to it. The fact that it says no internet connection, don't be too concerned about that. That Because it's a device and not a wireless router with a broadband connection, you'll always see that, same as if you're connected to a wireless printer. So we've got our wireless connection. Um, so now we can just go to Safari first, just to uh, set the Navlink 2 up into the right mode. So I'm just going to type in there 192.168.1.1. We're actually using the um, uh, Navlink 2 in access point mode now, so we're so we're wirelessly connected to it, and it's always available at that 192.168.1.1 address. So this is the the settings page. You can. Uh, look at all the, the different settings we've got there. The ones that we're interested in are these communication settings. So the optimum settings for the Navionics app are to set the uh, gateway mode to uh, AIS mode. And TCP and UDP, it really comes down to whether you want to use one device and just make sure that you're only using one device with it with a secure connection, which in which case use TCP, or if you want to use multiple devices all running um, the same app, then uh, you use the UDP mode. So I'm going to select UDP um, for the purposes of this video, and then we can go update settings, and the Navlink 2 will now apply those settings and reboot. So we'll just wait a few seconds. Uh, we can keep an eye on the the wireless settings there. Looks like oh, there we go. It just went off temporarily. Now it's come back on. It's reconnected. So that's great. So now. We've got the wireless connection all set up. The Navlink 2 is set up in the mode that we want. And we're going to go to the Navionics app. And uh, up it fires with the Navionics chart there. And what we want to do now is go into the paired devices. So here um, we're going to add a device. So click on that add device. I'm going to give it a name so that I know which device we're connected to. Navlink. Two, um, but you can put any name in there. Um, the host. Now, if this was a TTP connection, we'd put in the same IP address, the 192.168.1.1, uh, as we did for, to bring up the web page. But for UDP, it's a broadcast, and so all we do there is we set 0.0.0.0.0, um, which tells it to go to the to the gateway and listen to the broadcast. Uh, on port 2000 and that's the same port um, both for UDP and TCP. So there we go, we've set everything up, we're going to select UDP mode so that matches the mode that we set the Navlink 2 into and then we click save and immediately it's coming up as connected and you can start to see now the AIS targets appearing on the, the chart so there's data flowing uh, from the Navlink 2 onto the uh, Navionics chart and then you've also got there it shows you that we're receiving AIS data which is reminding me to renew my subscription must do that and uh, it's also showing us that we've got external GPS data coming in from the NMEA 2000 network as well and one other thing if um, there was a depth system on the um, oops, sorry about that that was a, an alarm going off on my chart plotter um, if there was a um, a depth system in the NMEA 2000 network, we'd also get the depth data coming through here so that we could use the sonar charts uh, feature of the Navionics app. So there you go, you've got all the the um, AIS targets there. Um, we can actually, let's zoom in on one, there we go, select it. Now you'll see it comes up just with the um, MMSI number there. Um, it takes about six minutes for all the boat names to appear. Um, so initially you get the targets with just the MMSI numbers and then after about six minutes um, all of the vessels will have transmitted their uh, static data which is only transmitted on a, on 
the six minute interval um, and that will start to populate all the, the boat names. So there you go. Um, you've also now got on the um, Navionics app, ooh, <laughs> another, should have turned that alarm off I think. Um, you've also got on the Navionics app now the closest point of approach and the timed closest point of approach um, alarms and those are in the, uh, let's have a look, I think they're in the map options, uh, AIS settings, and there you go, you can turn on and off the AIS display. Um, you can also set the collision um, avoidance alarm, um, and you set the safe range, the range at which you're comfortable to pass other vessels without an alarm going off, and then also the time at which you want to, so you want to be uh, told about it, in five minutes before it's actually going to happen. So there you go. Navionics is one of the most popular, um, if not the most popular, marine navigation app uh, on the market. Uh, lots of our customers use it, and our AIS uh, systems and our wireless systems all work with it. And that's how you set it up. Thanks very much for watching.